Welcome to the ICC 2020 Daily Recap Show. And of course, Game 1 has now finished. A good performance by Sri Lanka. Ricardo's alongside. <laughs> and before we get a chat from him, let's just have a look at the scorecard of that first game. Zimbabwe won the toss, invited Sri Lanka to bat. They didn't bat all that well in the middle, but they were superb at the end. 182 for four, and Sengakara and Mendes, uh, the top scorers, Mendes the all-rounder. And look at those bowling figures. A gentleman, a six for eight, six wickets for eight runs. Given Mendes three for 24. So, man of the match was Agenda Mendes, and Sri Lanka were just superb today. Ricardo, what were your thoughts on the game? Uh, impressive performance by uh, Sri Lanka. I think um, you don't get better than that when it comes to T20. I think they capitalize in terms of their batting, in terms of where they finish, which is important. I think batting in, um, in partnerships is normally good, especially when you have that kind of lineup. They realized that the start wasn't as great as they wanted, but they capitalized in the middle and came great guns at the end. Um, with this kind of total, I think that's what they'll be aiming for pretty much every game. Gee, they've got some uh, some variations, haven't they, Sri Lanka? You look through that list, they've got most importantly experienced players, but also guys, all-rounders, and, and, and so many options for uh, Mahela the skipper. It's good to have a, a, a team like that as a captain. I think that's a winning team. I think that's the, the kind of team that you want to have as a captain. When you look at the, the performance of the three, um, three of the top or the batsmen who got runs and with the, 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 the guys who were still in the dugout, I mean, it gives you a, a great feeling going into your other games, knowing that, hey, if, even if your top order fails, you know that you have something to come at the end. Tula Karatna Dorshan is going to be a key player throughout the tournament. He played very well in the World Cup uh, not so long ago. He got them off to a pretty good start. And then they lost a couple of wickets, driving on the up as they could do in uh, Hambantota. But, uh, a couple of wickets going down, a little bit of uh, sluggishness from the run-out department actually caused them at the beginning. Yes, um, Mike, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not particularly impressed with um, the running of Sri Lanka in the middle. I think they, they, they're a bit sluggish. Um, Zimbabwe messed up a bit in, in the feeling as well. So I think all in all, they, they got away with some things. But I think they need to improve when they're um, running between the wicket. Their batting is, is, is strong, um, which is good for them. But um, when they meet stronger teams, I think it's, it, it will come into play. This is where it counts. The death batting, if you like, as opposed to the death bowling. This is where it really counts in this format. <laughs> For sure, uh, when you when you can um, do that in the end with the last five six overs on the board, that's what you want because I mean, it, it's coming down to the end. The pressure is on, and um, I think Sri Lanka have the button to do that kind of um, stuff when it, the big hitter. Kumar Sengakara there is sacrificing his wicket. Uh, Pereira just hoiking the first <laughs> ball for six. Simple as that. That is exceptional. I think you, you have to have those players in your team. Not many players can come in and first ball hit it out the ground. And when you have that kind of um, lineup with those guys coming at the end there, that says something. If we look at Zimbabwe, in my view, look, they don't play too much cricket and they haven't had a great deal of cricket, so that's a major problem. But they let themselves badly down with the disciplines. Yes, I think uh, starting off um, in the field was um, pretty atrocious. I think the, um, the feeling was, was definitely off. And if your feeling is off um, going up against a team like um, Sri Lanka, you're going to suffer the consequences. And um, they didn't make it any better in the batting department. Played their last T20 way back in February. So uh, well, that, what does that, that do to a change room? That is, that is, um, that is a long time not to, to play a T20 game. Coming into a World Cup like this, up against Sri Lanka in your first game, I mean, that is, that is definitely almost like coming into suicide. And I mean, it could be a very short tournament for Zimbabwe now after the way they looked in this first game. They had no idea I mean, that against the spin of Ajahn Mendes, but we'll get to that in a sec. But now they've lost 13 T20s in a row, and you would think they'd be far more competitive than that. Uh, you would think so. Um, but when you look at, as you said, um, playing your last T20 in January, February, whenever that was, um, coming into a T20 World Cup when every single team would be on the top of their game and you're not experienced or have enough um, games under your belt coming into this, I mean, you're going to suffer the consequence. What about the man of the match, Ajanta Mendes? He was sensational. Oh, on the ball, um, as we would say in the Caribbean, on the money. Um, he was pretty much on target. Every single ball was on stump. Whenever he misses, um, he hits um, a lot of hit wickets. Um, stumps and stuff like that and uh, consistency was very important throughout the game. He's got the variation, we know that. It's, a, it's an unorthodox delivery style. His strength is his control, which I think was a perfect, uh, perfect example of today. But Ian Bishop made a very good point. He's on the road back. He was sorted out by a few of the analysts and teams, particularly India, in uh, the, over the last couple of years. He's on the road back. 
but we can't get too carried away yet until we see him play against good teams. Of course, and I think in, in, in a T20 format, you don't have much time to study him. You don't have much time to really get in and say you're going to bat two, three overs to see what he's doing. So that's why it's key for Sri Lanka right now to have someone like that bowling up front. He has four overs, you get them in and you get them on the money and it's obvious that once he's on the ball, he's going to get the wickets, he's going to get the breakthrough that Sri Lanka needs. Spinners of the start, we're going to see it throughout the tournament. Um, I think it's going to be um, something that um, a lot of teams will be trying. Um, I'm sure that West Indies probably will be looking at that well, as that as well in terms of their bowler um, in, in, in Badri and maybe Sunil Narayan. I'll tell you something which is going to be a concern for Sri Lanka. They'll be delighted they won that first game. Home crowd, of course, a little bit of pressure building up, I suppose. Angelo Matthews, he looked like he was in a bit of trouble with that elbow. Um, that could be of concern, um, but I think Sri Lanka have a pretty all-round team as well. Um, I think they, they, they have a good compact team. They have good players who can trip in at any moment. And when you look at Malinga bowling two overs, keeping him at the end and then bringing your spinners and, and, and do and still have changes to come. I think Sri Lanka have a good all-round team. They're obviously one of the favourites and um, the guys pretty pretty confidently winning this game against Zimbabwe. So that is uh, something behind them and they'll be looking forward to the next game. Malinga normally tops and tiles at the start and then cleans them up four or five at times at the bottom. We hardly swim today. It was the spin department that took control. One thing the Sri Lankans do know is they know their roles. Definitely. And I think the captain is pretty familiar with his players. He know yeah. what works and he know when to bring in what player. OK, so overall, a good start from Sri Lanka. Anything that worried you about them today? Um, not much. I just think they need to work on their running between the wickets pretty much and, and they should be in um, good standing going forward. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that uh, Zimbabwe, well, they were totally outplayed. Uh, Sri Lanka also were just a little bit rusty. So they've still got some work to do. <laughs> yeah, they have some work to do. But I think when they're playing against better teams, um, the, you will see probably um, their best um, players come out and, and, and stand up to the plate. That'll make them kick into top gear, that's for sure. But a good start, impressive start from them. We're going to take a break. Now, when we come back on our recap show, which we're going to be doing uh, after every game, by the way, we're going to talk more about the West Indies and where they're placed. One of the features of our broadcast is you can watch the replay of the games. Of course, tonight is going to be Sri Lanka versus Zimbabwe at uh, 8 p.m. on ESPN and ESPNplay.com and then also our ICC World 2020 daily recap show at 11 p.m. as well. Okay, we're going to turn our attention now to the West Indies and just get our teeth into that a little bit. We've talked about the fact that they are one of the favourites, considered one of the favourites. I heard Darren Sammy saying that uh, he likes that tag just before they went to Sri Lanka. How much extra pressure does that put on the team? Um, at this stage, I don't think much. I think it's good to, to know that you're going in a, a World Cup like this um, as favourite. I don't think that's happened to the West Indies team in a very long time. And I think for the boys going in, this would probably be very exciting for them. What about the coaching staff? I mean, it seems to have gelled quite nicely of late. Yes, there were some issues, we do know that, but uh, of late it seems to be a, a nice environment to work in. Mike, I think what's good about the team is that they've been playing together for a while now and um, the coaching staff seem to be um, pretty much gelled with the players. They have done some camps and stuff like that and quite a few tours together. And I think the guys are really coming into their own as a team, more so than um, as individual players. Let's get down to the nuts and bolts now. <laughs> Why do you think they'll be successful? Um, I think in terms of um, the overall performance, in terms of getting runs on the board consistently, I think that is something that we have to look at. I think. Um, the, the, the guys who, who normally delivers are, are stepping up to the play, people like Chris Gale, the Pollards, the Bravos and Sami. And um, I think with a player like Marlon Samuels back in the team, that says a lot for West Indies. And I think they have a good batting lineup. And to me, um, getting runs on the board is always important. We're going to have a look at the squad and just go through some of the names that perhaps the guys uh, are not all that familiar with. I mean, you've mentioned the guns, you've mentioned the big names. What about some of those other guys? Um, I think in terms of um, the bowling department, um, Sunil Narayan is definitely someone who has um, really made his name in T20 cricket from the IPL and um, I think Marlon Samuels is definitely someone to look at in, 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 the, in, the, in the coming tournament. I think he's been in great form. He has two century under his belt in the last couple of months. So I think um, um, those guys are, are definitely two players to look out for in the batting and bowling department. You played in the last winning team, West Indies, when was that? Champions Trophy? 
2004 in England. Okay, so that, uh, that's that's a long time between drinks. And, and the wow. West Indies have not got into the semis in this format before. Um, no, I think it's it's been a while, and I think this would be a welcome um, for them going into the T20 in Sri Lanka and being named as a favourite to win the um, the T20 World Cup. And I think that should give the guys a boost and a new sense of energy to really go out there and win it. I can uh, hear. I think I can feel a couple of comments out there in in the Caribbean, <laughs> and it's one that I would uh, go with as well. That so much of this success of the West Indies team depends on Chris Gale. I think definitely. I think someone like Chris Gale leading from the front um, at the top of the order is some is always good. And I think he will deliver for the West Indies because he's been doing that throughout the years. And um, he likes that kind of responsibility being placed on him. And with him coming back in the team based on all the drama and stuff like that, he wants to make a point and bring this trophy home for the West Indies. What about Dwayne Bravo? Burst on the scene initially, uh, had some injury concerns. Where's he placed now? Very exciting player. I think with Bravo in any team, there's something happening at every time. He's always um, in the play. Something is always happening with Bravo. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of form he's in, but with Bravo in your team, anything is expected and is, is always good. Narayan? Narayan, um, I, I'm expecting great things from him. I think he's done why, well in why IPL. Why is he so special? Well, I mean, he had a great IPL, he's had a great um, year, Emerging Cricket of the Year. Why is he so special? Um, I knew, um, I pretty much know um, Narayan from a very young age. We played together in the same club in Trinidad and Tobago. And, Could you pick um, him then? Yes, I could. Okay. Um, but luckily for me, I was playing on the same team, so I didn't have to deal with much of that in the, in, in the games. But he had back then you could see the potential, and I think with him playing in the IPL and, and playing in these big tournaments, give him that confidence to really come out and deliver. And I think it, it needs more of these kind of um, tournaments and stuff like that to expose young players like Narai. He's a top-notch spinner, we know that. We've seen enough already and heard enough already to know that spin is not going to be an overly powerful feature in this T20 World Cup, although as it goes on, I'm sure it will develop a little bit more. It's going to be the part-timers who are not going to be successful. I think he will be. I think he will be, and um, I think the conditions in, in Sri Lanka will suit him as well. And I think West Indies will probably look to, um, to spinners to really do um, some damage in terms of getting their, their early breakthroughs and stuff like that. Maybe we can see some surprises in terms of the, the bowling attack and stuff like that and how they start the innings. Hit me with some reasons why the quicks are going to be key. Um, West Indies have always depended on their quick bowlers to get early breakthroughs and stuff like that. But I think in T20 cricket now, they might have to look at their strategies a bit more because, I mean, at the top of the order, we tend to look to get as much runs in the first six overs. Sometimes um, the fast bowlers can go for a bit more. Um, so I think West Indies will probably look to probably cut and dice and, and, and probably use a spinner here and there to open the ball in and, and, and come with something different so that the opposite team will not expect what we did, what they're coming with. What about the big smack that uh, the West Indies got in the warm-up game, their first warm-up game against Sri Lanka and they got uh, beaten by a long margin? Well, um, that is something um, I, I think, as, as the coach mentioned, is no great concern of his. Um, I think it's good to get a warm-up under their belt to see where their weaknesses and their strengths and what they need to work on going into the opening game against Australia. I think that's going to be a big, um, a crucial game for them to win. Um, a, a psychological. That's, that's on Saturday, by the way. Yeah. In Colombo, so conditions are going to be better for yeah. batting there. Most definitely. I think um, psychologically, West Indies needs to get past this hurdle with Australia in terms of beating them. And it's never a bad thing, I guess, to get a wake-up call. <laughs> never a bad thing at all. I think it's always good good and bad losing your warm-up game going so therefore you're on your peak and you know exactly what you need to do to get that extra edge here's the question what are your concerns what concerns do you have well um my concern with West Indies is just about, as I said early on, um, I'm going to stick to it, is consistency. I think we need to um, be consistent in terms of getting runs on the board, getting those partnerships going, and in the bowling department, back the bowlers up in the field. I think that's going to be key overall in them moving forward. Fielding will be key, but what about a situation the West Indies in years gone by, if they've hit a bit of a downward spiral, they've found it a little bit tough to get out of that. It's a shortened version, it's easier, I guess. Yeah, I think um, T20 cricket is up West Indies um, alley in terms yeah. of the way they play, um, their themselves. style. Um, and they have been doing well in the last couple of months and I think that rejuvenating um, that, that whole spirit in terms of winning um, they're getting accustomed to so I think in terms of um, playing against Australia that would be a key game for them to win and move on from there and is this going to bring the best out of and uh, Kyron Pollard for example he, IPL is five years old a lot of these guys now are used to conditions in the subcontinent yes I think um, 
Pollard, Bravo, um, Chris Gale and Narayan will play a key role in this first game because they'll be looking towards them because they have the experience of playing out there more than the other guys. Uh, Marlon Samuels has done uh, uh, did a stint in, um, in the IPL as well and they're all in good form so I think this um, T20 came at a good time for them based on they're now in their peak so I think they will pretty much stand out and give West Indies what they need. Exciting times that's for sure Ricardo, thanks for those views. Exciting times for the West Indies. Just a reminder by the way as we go into our next break I'm going to remind you about ESPNplay.com and if you see uh, this in the Caribbean region it means you can watch uh, the games on your PC tablet or other devices. By the way, for more information, go to ESPNCaribbean.com and most importantly, if you cannot access the coverage, please contact your local provider. Just the one game today, two games tomorrow. The first one, a day game, Australia versus Ireland, then the night game, Afghanistan versus India. So a couple of uh, big guns playing Australia and India, 5.45 in the morning and 9.45. So you can uh, join those live as well. Let's first of all talk about Australia versus Ireland. What are your thoughts about that one? It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a test, this one, for Australia <laughs> after the disappointing uh, tour against Pakistan and the UAE. I think looking at it that way, maybe a test, yeah. Uh... I think Australia for me is probably the dark horse in this um, T20 World Cup. You said earlier you thought they might get to the semis. Uh, definitely. Uh, what is what is important for me? I think Australia knows how to win. That's most important. And when you know how to win, you know the kind of games to play and know pretty much when you're going wrong and what you need to do to step your game up. And I think Australia has that kind of experience. They have the kind of players who can win games for them. And they have um, a lot of good players who have played for quite a bit. They know how to get stuck in when the chips are down. But what about Ireland? It's a spirited Ireland team. Ireland is a good team. I think they've been playing consistent over the last couple of months and, and um, probably winning a lot of games as well. And I think they could be a surprise in this tournament. They rely very heavily on their top three batsmen. I think everyone remembers uh, Kevin O'Brien against England in the last World Cup with that uh, bet on the, in fact, 100 or 50 balls exactly, which were quite sensational. So again, in this format, I mean, there is a chance for guys who are reasonable players to actually do something special because they've got nothing to lose. Definitely. Uh, guys can excel in this tournament because, I mean, it, as I said, it's T20. T20, a lot of stars are born a star is born pretty much every day and I think that's the important thing about a World Cup like this you never can rule a team out or a player out because at a given day they can have just a blinder although you might be able to rule out Afghanistan when they come up against <laughs> India in the second game that's going to be a tough call for them well definitely I'm looking for some big runs um, in that in that game especially India um, and, and I know that players like say well, at the top of the order would be looking to get a big one you have um, Virat and um, Ryan and those guys are definitely going to look to cash in against um, Afghanistan there's a lot of hoopla a couple of years ago in Afghanistan qualified for the ODIs they've got a couple of spinners they rely heavily on but horribly short of match practice uh, definitely um, I saw the warm-up game against um, um, Australia back then and I mean they didn't perform too bad but uh, I think um, India is a way a better team and um, you will see the difference when um, the game get kicks off tomorrow. They've only played three T20s uh, Afghanistan which is going to help their cause. India's strength is uh, with the willow. Uh, definitely batting and runs on the board is always your strength. And their weaknesses I guess is going to be uh, in the bowling front in the field and we've got to watch that very carefully but it is going to be interesting to see how they go. Definitely. I think um, India will definitely have to look to make runs all the time and look to, to come in and see what they can get in the bowling department. Ricardo, thanks very much uh, for your views today. So we've got two games uh, tomorrow. We had a terrific performance from Sri Lanka first up today and the Mendes boys were sensational. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.